It's Monday, it's June 12th. Listen, your East Coast, it's 652. Your Central, it's 5. Mountain, it's 4. And Pacific, it's 352. Listen, Pacific, you're almost fucking there. If you're working that standard 5 p.m. quit time, you got about an hour and eight minutes. Deborah's in the kitchen. It was Donut Monday. Deborah's in the kitchen. Oh my God, Deborah's blowing fucking fart air everywhere. It's horrible. You're plugging your nose. You have your headphones in. This podcast may not reach you in time, but at least you'll have me to start your day off on a good note tomorrow. I am Garrett Belich. I am your host of the Bay Side Report. You never know how we're going to come in to you with these episodes. But here we are. I went to the Rays game on Saturday. They lost. I mushed them. What else is new? But still, they're the best team in the AL. I think they're still the best team in baseball. I think the Rangers are the second best team in both AL and baseball. But don't quote me. I'm no, uh, I'm no Tim Kirchin. Anyways, that was fun. Sat in the outfield about four rows up in left field from Ross Arena. There were some animals there. Some dude from West Virginia that was a Steeler and Pirate fan. So respect, respect. Dude was pretty funny. He was making some good jokes. So you always got to keep the outfield fucking 100%. Then they have this new 70s bar. We were in there cutting it up. But then this, he looked like the Undertaker. He was about 6'6", fucking yoked. Maybe... Maybe could have done meth. Maybe a methed up Undertaker looking guy that missed his shot in Hollywood. But he just came up and hockey checked my ass. No specific reason. I dance like a little fucking white dude. So maybe he just wasn't feeling the moves. I totally understand. But it's always good to have new spots in St. Pete. No more. I'm, I'm kind of getting over the country music. You know, we need more Hispanic or 70s culture here in Pinellas County. Uh, PGA and live. That's the big fucking talk. I haven't been on here in a week and you would think it's been a fucking year with all the events that happen, especially in the, you know, alien case there. There's aliens every day. And then now Trump's back in Miami getting ready, um, for a court appearance tomorrow. You got fire smoke all over New York city. Conor McGregor knocked the fuck out of a Miami heat mascot. So it's, we're fucking rolling, baby. We always got something. You know, I had a pretty light week myself, but the news always keeps us fucking moving along here. But the PGA and Live goes to show you, can't trust your boss, any company. You got a better offer. You got something else on the horizon that's better. Go for that shit. That, that we are, we're family. We're family. Nah, no, you're not. They don't give a fuck about you. They'll burn you in a second. And you saw that happen with Jay Monahan. First hand. So now the Saudi Arabians pretty much control the landscape of professional golf moving forward. That's what I understand from it. But I think Brooks Kepka really I'm, did the win, did the PGA Championship win from Brooks Kepka make this happen? Not make it happen. I know there was negotiations going on for weeks before, but was it a was it a catalyst of the deal? being done maybe not i'm no i'm no brandel shambly i don't know much much about that anyways moving on it's the u.s open week in golf so that's exciting another major i think i think you just take brooks kepka to the bank i think he's gonna get it done i was gonna do a little special edition here the bay side report tonight we're gonna talk job history from ever forever just just any job i've ever had from the beginning to now and I've had quite a few good ones, especially my uh, college one, which we're not going to get to this episode, was probably one of the best just positions you could have for time and place. High school, of course, I worked at the pizza shop with my best friends, and that was one of the best times ever. So we're going to highlight that as well. But we're going to start back, way, way back in the day, the young days of Garth. So it all started at Barney's Bar and Grill. Now this bar used to operate a different area of where I grew up in Beaver County. It used to operate more in the this the local city. And it was an old mill bar, you know, it used to just be a shot and a beer mill bar. Mill workers go in there, you know, quick stop on their way home. But then it turned into, you know, more of a, of a restaurant. You know, it got uh, 
great food, fish fries on Fridays during Lent. Of course, you got all the Catholics down there going nuts. It's the big thing. And my parents were best friends with the owners of this bar. So we, I had been going to this bar, I think, since I was in my mother's stomach, you know, from birth until growing up. I remember they'd always throw me a, a cup full of quarters and, you know, say, go, go play the fucking golf game for three hours. And they, you know, they'd eat and have a good time with all their friends. That was their Friday hangout. You know, it was pretty cool. My parents had a good thing. And on a side note, this is in, we're going back. We're doing some history here. This is like 2002. Pittsburgh was a very different city in general. Their uh, U.S. Airways was a massive hub. And this was kind of when it started declining after 9-11, but it was still buzzing. It was still busy. Pittsburgh Airport used to be like Philly or Boston or Charlotte. It was that busy, and it boosted the economy. Everyone, pretty much everyone worked in the airlines, including my, my dad and, you know, a lot of their friends. So it was, it was kind of the new meetup. It went from the steel mill to the airlines. That was kind of once the steel mill left the Beaver County area, the airlines kind of came in to uh, stimulate the jobs in the area. So, you know, they give me the quarters and I go fuck off and, and go play the really golf game. But as years went on, the place eventually moved to a new location um, in the same in the same town, just in a nicer area. It had a Now it had a patio. It was beautiful. And it was getting a little dangerous in its first area. So that's kind of reason why it moved. So it moved to a safer area, better environment. And this is when shit got this is when the complete culture of the bar changed complete culture. It kind of had this blue collar. Yeah. It still had like the blue collar, super steel mill, you know, even though it was kind of an, a different, you know, the steel mills were kind of out of by that time, but it had that real blue collar feel. Now it had a classier feel. It had a, a Jersey shore feel later on. Once we get to where I'm about to lead you, 2014, when I first started working there, Jersey Shore was huge. Jersey Shore was probably the biggest point of American pop culture, still in 2014, I'd say, maybe tapering off a little bit, but still pretty big, especially for Italian Americans. And I did, it was a big Italian, is still a big Italian American community. So fast forward to sophomore year, and I'm I'm 16. I think I'm 15 and a half. You could start working a job at 15 and a half. And I think that's what I did. So I, my dad was always up my ass. He's like, the second you get, can get that worker's permit, you're getting it and you're getting a job. And that's, you know, he drove me right to the office. The second you could get it signed up. And I, I was, I was pumped. You know, I was kind of, I was kind of ready. I was just riding BMX bikes around town, you know, spray paint and shit, lighting TVs on fire. I, I needed a new, I needed to, you know, get some responsibility in my life. I needed to you know, quit just being such a nuisance to my neighborhood and the community in general. So my first day there and my parents were still best friends with the owner. So it was kind of, you know, a nice way to get me into the job. And they also, they, it was a partnership. The other half, my parents were also friends with, and they happened to be my neighbors lived two doors down and they still do from my parents to this day. So you know, it was pretty comfortable. And I knew, I knew most of the people that worked there from hanging out at the bar for, for years. So I was an easy fit and it was a, it was a great job. It was a great first job for a 15, 16 year old kid. You know, you're just sweeping floors, picking up dirty plates and cups and dishes. You're, you get nice for the bartender. And that's when I really learned how to, you know, you got to work hard to build relationships, especially if you're trying to, you know, collaborate with these people in a workplace, you got to, I always took care of the bartenders and they were like, at the time they were probably mid twenties, you know, females, there's some males too, as well It was a good mix, but I always gotten the good graces of all the girl bartenders, you know, hustle hard. Cause then they, they'll, they'll throw you more cash, you know, or they'll at least be nice to you. They'll take care of you, get you more shifts, whatever it was. So I remember the first, you know, week or two was great. Just working the weekends, you know, just running around, picking up dishes, plates, you know, some weeknights I dishwashed, which was way, you know, in the summer it was crazy, but in the winter it was great. Cause you, you just be inside and it was dead when it was like zero degrees out in the winter, just go to the bar and bullshit with the cooks and the bartenders and watch TV. So it was kind of that, you know, it was a very, uh, socially, in, um, positive work environment, of course. So I was doing that and 
at that time in my life, I wasn't really, I wasn't a horrible troublemaker. I, I smoked weed. I didn't drink. I never was a big drinker. Uh, another business attempt. This was kind of my first, this was my first attempt at entrepreneurism. And I'm not really sure the timing. And this was kind of, I think this was further down the line of me working this job, maybe four or five months down the line. And we discovered, me and my buddies at the time discovered that these flower seeds you could buy at Lowe's have LSA, which is lysergic. It's a close relative to LSD. So we had a bright idea. You know, you crush the seeds down into finite powder and you can make a tea out of them. That's what we did. You crush it down, make a powder and a tea that you could drink. And it had similar effects. Ding, 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 business idea. You know, we were going to sell the morning glory seeds as like a tea bag, tea bags and say, you know, if you make a tea with this and drink it, you're going to feel good. For all the right, great reasons, this, <laughs> this idea fell through. But I, I, was, I always wasn't super entrepreneur naturally, but, you know, with a little work and a little, uh, you know, thinking, I kind of had some ideas here and there. So that was one of them. And thank God that fell through. But anyways, the first job at Barney's was good. I also was cutting grass in the, around the neighborhood too. You know, that was always a great hustle as a kid, cutting grass. I'd always, um, I also would uh, shovel snow around the neighborhood too. Go knock on doors after a snowstorm if you're not in school. You know, someone's going to throw you 20, 30 bucks to go take care of their shit. But Barney's, like I said, it had that Jersey Shore feeling. It was, it was just a free for all on the weekends, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. I'd work those late night shifts bar backing. And you'd be there, you know, till 3 a.m. People just thrown up in the, in the toilets, on the floors, people jumping up and down, dancing, fights going on. It was the Beaver County elite all meeting up, the meeting of the <laughs> like 30 year old people that never left Beaver County and just, you know, would stay there and just, it was like the player haters ball, you know, that was the place to be in the 2010s. Everyone was there from 21 and up and even younger perhaps. But anyways, moving on, um, I was, yeah, I was 15, 16. I really took in the it's like, man, this is what it is. It's what it is to be an adult. You just come here and I still just, the alcohol thing never appealed to me. I would, I would sip rum chata every once in a while. You know, I, when I was far back in the outside bar, I'd, I'd pour some rum chata and sip on it throughout the shift. But that was, it wasn't like I was pounding 10 beers. You know, I was always just a classy sipper when I was 15, 16. And my social life was pretty good too. You know, in, in high school, that's when we really started utilizing when your friends get licenses, that's when shit really gets, starts to get fun. Cause we had, we had a rope swing in the woods, you know, we go hang out and party there. We, uh, I had a girlfriend and we all had a big friend group and we'd all, you know, do our thing every weekend after I got out of Barney's, you know, all of my older friends had licenses. So we were, we were young Kings and Queens living the fucking high school life. And it was good. I just, you know, did that. And then also this guy that was at Barney's at the time, you know, eating there, I was busting his table. He's bullshitting with me. He goes, do you ever cut grass? I was like, yeah, I, I cut grass on the side. He goes, all right, well, why don't you come out to my property in the, in this country area nearby farmland and everything. He goes, come out to my, to come out to my property. I got this 1960s, 1950s tractor and I'll, I'll hire you to cut my grass. It's a day job paying me shit. It was like eight bucks an hour. It was cash though, at least for the time in 2014, you know, not bad for a, for a 15 year old. I was like, all right, yeah, fuck it. So I go out, my parent, I remember my mom dropped me off at like 8 AM. She's like, all right, I'll be back at like five, pick you up. And this place was fucking huge. He had horses, cows, all these animals, in ground swimming pool. The house was massive, massive fucking house. So, you know, I'm riding this tractor and I was doing pretty good, but then there was a little dicey area. It was, it was very hilly. He had all these fences up and I just, I bashed this fucking 1950s. This tractor was out of world war two. Even it was old as fuck. I, it was a tractor with a pulley. So it had the, the grass cutter on the back and I just bashed this fucking tractor 
into a fence and the i remember the light crack he didn't he was cool he's like i don't give a fuck he goes i'm just happy you're okay because obviously you know i'm not his employee i'm just some kid that he met at a bar that i'm cutting grass for so that was good i never went back and funny enough when i got an underage two years later uh, i had to go to a forced like ard class you know because to get it off your record and he was in it so it's always good to have reunions. We didn't really talk about the grass cutting. We just kind of nodded at each other. But sometimes life comes full circle and you see people you never thought you'd see again in, in unsuspecting areas. So Barney's, yeah, Barney's kept going along. I got very comfortable there. I was, you know, obviously I was close with the owners and everything. And I worked hard. I, I can't lie. I worked my ass off. You know, I'd be out there hustling the bar back. I, I didn't like doing the dishwashing. I always prefer to be outside hustling and running around, just picking shit up, sweeping, you know, cleaning stuff. So it was good. But you know what happened, everyone? I could have stayed there. I should I should have just stayed there. And maybe I was getting a little, you know, you want to expand your options, maybe try new new places around town. So also having a girlfriend influence you at the time is a horrible idea. But you're young and fucking dumb. What are you going to do? So my girlfriend worked at this banquet place. And, you know, I was I was looking for a change. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll test a new job. So next thing you know, I'm working in a wedding and banquet hall. And I'm still cutting grass. The cutting grass has ramped up significantly. We really, me and a friend did it as a partnership. Both had trucks. So we just load up our, load up our mowers we had our loc- we had our regulars, you had Tony the painter, you know, he was kind of a pain in the ass because he wanted you to come once a month, let it grow to a meadow, and then still want you to cut it all the way down. But still, met some great people doing that. But then I worked at this wedding and banquet center on the weekends. And God, what a what a horrible way to spend your weekends in the summer working at a wedding banquet, working any of these weddings. So I get the job and you have to wear a bow tie, you gotta wear black dress pants it was horrible i do you think i can tie a fucking bow tie i think i can now but at the time there was no shot so i just bought the clip on bow tie and rocked with that but i hated the oh the dressing up's the worst you gotta wear a name tag that was my first time ever wearing a name tag that's how you know you're growing up when you're that sick when you first have to put on a name tag that's how you know shit's getting a little real not not fully real but like you're kind of as a teenager you're progressing the fucking mountain a little bit so did that and it was it was a horrible horrible idea i uh it was kind of like put on a dance not a dance show but you're kind of like a puppet out there you're an actor because like they're doing the wedding like you're kind of choreographing around when you're bringing the food in so they they're kind of you should get a special credit on that wedding you know the invitation like featuring uh kitchen boy one kitchen boy two so the worst thing i ever did it was all the weddings were a little different and I wish I really remember because I know there were some wacky fucking weddings that I, that I got to sit through and watch, which was a cool part of the wedding, but I'm carrying this hot, this hot thing of water out. It was done. It was like there, there's a ceremony going on, but we're still, while the ceremony's going on, we're carrying the hot, the hot water plates back to the kitchen. So I'm carrying mine and there was this guy sitting at the table with his back turned like this. And I just come walking by with the hot water plate. And I, it, I lost control. It dumps all over his back, hot water all over his back. (laughs) He jumps up. Oh, it was like the cartoon when the cartoon jumps up and flails his arms like that. Oh, I felt so fucking bad. And I couldn't, I thought I was going to get fired right away on the spot, but no, they kept me and funny enough my mom also was friends with the manager there so that was kind of cool on top of you know me getting influenced into the job but i told her i was like yeah like i honestly wanted fired i was ready to fucking go i was i was ready to call it. i was like this is not this is not my forte right here all this you know i'm i'm out here i'm, I'm playing butler in broadway for someone's wedding you know they're gonna look back at their wedding pictures and they're just gonna see flaming hot water pouring over onto this guy's back so that job i worked that job a whole summer i worked that job it didn't last long it was it was pretty much a summer internship from may to august of 2015 like i said i was influenced by my girlfriend at the time but 
thank the Lord, we ended up going separate ways. And I quit that job after three months. I only had that one incident there. Oh, and I know, I know what was the kicker. They moved me to parking lot duty, which was honestly sick. You just literally fuck around in a parking lot. You could have brought an AirPod, put an AirPod in, and no one say dick. But once they move you to parking lot duty, that's when you, you're being demoted. So after the water spilling incident, I think there were a few others. Maybe they just thought I was a little rough around the edges for the, for the proper uh, Broadway, you know, wedding show going on in there. So they moved me to parking lot duty, and that was a slap in the face. I was like, yep, I'm done. So we were, we were already broken up. I was like, it's time to move on. So after that, I went to Scooch's Pizza and beer. My best friend Scooch, who's been on the podcast, that's, uh, he pretty much got me in, of course, because it's his family's pizza shop. So I started working there. And we're going to hold you right there. That's going to come in part two, because we're going to get Scooch himself on the phone to call in. And we're going to maybe recount some memories and go throughout the years of Scooch's. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the Bayside Report. Of course, you have the NBA Finals tonight. So we'll be watching. That's where the fuck I'm going to watch the NBA Finals. I hope you're doing the same. All right, West Coast, it's 414. You're fucking staring at that clock. You're dying to get the fuck out of that office. Just leave. Who gives a fuck? Just leave. Just leave. It's Monday. Tell them your stomach hurts. Tell them you're not feeling well. Tell them you have shit to do. As always, it's Garrett Bellich, your host of the Bayside Report. Thank you for tuning in. Our loyal, I don't know, we need to create a fan club or something. Email me ideas. G-A-R-R-E-T-T-B-E-L-I-C-H-1-5 at gmail.com. What's our fake ad of the week? It's Rolling Rock. I'm always plugging Rolling Rock unknowingly they're getting so much free fucking advertising to the 10 people that watch on youtube rolling rock when you've had a hard day at work and deborah's been shitting donut dust up in the kitchen all day and you're tired of smelling it come home throw those shoes and dress pants off and unwind with rolling rock official beer sponsor unofficially of the Bayside Report. All right, everyone. God bless.